Hi there, it's Rachel Gregg and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'd like to share with you a flip through of my completed journal for Artful August 2022. So Artful August is a little community challenge that I run on Instagram where I provide a list of prompts for the month and it's just a nice little free fun community challenge to just inspire you to be a little bit creative and to make your August nice and artful. So these little prompts you can see here, they're just, they're very simple. So they're open for interpretation in a lot of different ways. And I also encourage you to use what medium you're used to using. So it doesn't necessarily need to be an art journaling challenge. You can use it for drawing or painting or any kind of art medium that you use. So that's the little prompt list that I share and I'll be putting that in the back of my journal. I just wanted to show you there and you can see here that's my Instagram handle if you want to go and find this uh, page of prompts and also the hashtag where other people are sharing their completed work. So even though this is an artful August challenge, it doesn't mean that you only have August to complete it. You can use these any month of the year. So if you wanted to or if you're only just finding this video now and you'd like to complete these prompts then by all means jump over to my Instagram where you can save this image and then you can use these little prompts to inspire your creativity. So this is my little completed journal and what I used was the 6x6 white watercolour journal by Dina Wakeley which is produced by Ranger Inc. And you can see my cover here has got a lot of little splatters. I deliberately uh, didn't like decorate it at the beginning of the month I just wanted to see what happened throughout the month just to add that extra nice little uh, splatter on the outside but what I did do was I stamped my Artful August 2022 title so it is done for the front cover of the book and then inside each page here is from the prompts so the prompts I used as just a little jump start which is what they're intended to be used for and then I mixed up what I did every single day uh, just with different products and different stamps and you know different stencils just having a little play for that day so for this one here this is using the garden prompt and what I used for this one was some Dina Wakely stencils and on my YouTube here, there is a little short um, video there showing how I created this. And also on my Instagram page, I created a reel for every single page in this journal. So if you'd like to go ahead and see a little snapshot of how I created each page, you can jump over to my Instagram and check out the reels on there because they will show you how I created each page. So this one here I use gloss sprays and some Dina Wakely stencils and then one of Dina's stamps here for this page and the gloss sprays you can see there in the screen they give a nice little sheen to it when it's sprayed a lot so that just gives a nice little texture to that page. So this page here well for the first one here I did it as a double spread uh, because there are more than 31 pages in this journal if you are using one side considered as one page so it meant that some days I could do a double page spread so for this first one I did a double page uh, but these two even though the colors are quite similar this is actually day two which is shimmer and you can see the shimmer there on that page and then this page here is the prompt for number and I used the number stencil here from Darkroom Door. So it just means that um, I was creating only on a six by six page size for most of the days throughout August. And I found that a really nice and easy size to do, especially if I was going to be doing this every single day, because it's not much bigger than a card size. So if you're looking at a card, like for instance, this is similar to a card size. So that is not much bigger than a card size if you're looking at six by four. But then here's a card that I've created, which is just a bit smaller than six by six. And I find cards really easy to create in that size. And so a journal page isn't much different in that regard. So if you're used to making cards, then this journal is uh, something that you may want to look at if you want to get into art journaling, because it is a really nice size to start with. 
So this is my little shimmer page here and I use the Dilutions shimmer sprays to add some shimmer over the top of some stencils and sheet music. Also did some embossing here with a shimmery embossing powder if you can see it there. It's got a little sparkle inside that. That's the black sparkle embossing powder from Ranger. And then this one here, this is the numbers. So I actually use the number medley stamp set for the background and also the number jumble stencil from Darkroom Door and put some like uh, texture paste through that and then colored it up and then just added a uh, Tim Holtz paper doll and some just little watercolor hearts that I had created. Okay, so this page here, this is for the prompt of soft and my inspiration for this was I used soft tissue for the background but then I also did this stamping in really soft colors and I've also used a nice little piece of mesh which is also quite soft so just uh, using different little interpretations of the word soft just to create that art journal page and this one here this is for the prompt of envelope and so I decorated a white envelope with some distress inks and then stamped it with the under the sea uh, rubber stamp set from Darkroom Door and also added in these little tags. So these tags here are stamped up. So you can actually see how I created these tags. I didn't do these tags for Artful August. These are ones that I had created previously and you can see them on the Darkroom Door YouTube channel. I was using the new Uncharted Mariner uh, Distress Ink from Tim Holtz and to create these tags and I thought uh, using or creating a little envelope here to put them into was a nice little way to use these tags. So they just pop in there, nice little interactive page. This one here, this prompt was linear and I used the Darkroom Door journal line stencil to outline this background here and then just colored it in with some Van Diemen's inks. And that just created a really nice vibrant page. And then I just wanted to add some black and white bits on top just so they pop off that page a little bit. This is another Tim Holtz paper doll. And these are the Gerber Daisy stamps from Darkroom Door and a little quote chip from Tim Holtz as well. This page here, this one is called Bright. And so I was just creating some bright sunflowers. And I mean, this one could have also been used for that shimmer page at the beginning as well. So you can see here how you've got lots of different ways you can interpret the prompts. So I just added some stickles inside my sunflowers. Now these sunflowers are using the sun stencil from Darkroom Door and I just made some little collage stems and then added some stickles just to give it that nice little shimmer to finish off with. This next one here, now this is a double page spread and this is for the prompt of round. And so I wanted to do these little round circles. This is using the circle stencil from Darkroom Door and then also using the new collage sheets that I've designed for Darkroom Door, which is the Elegant Ladies and then the Botanical Notes collage sheets. And inside those sets, there are some round images so that you can just punch them out and then add them to your page. And the process of this um, is also on the Darkroom Door YouTube channel so you can see how I've created that. Next up here, this one is the prompt of box. So I wanted to create a little box here for an image and then the larger box on the outside. And all of this is using Dina Wakely media products. So this is Dina Wakely tissue and then this is from her collage collective. Then these are Dina's stamps and a little typed ledger quote to go with at the front. This one here on the right, this is the prompt for stitch. And I always love bringing out the sewing machine for any kind of stitch prompts that I do. And this one here is no exception. So what I did for this one is I actually got some sheet music and then I stitched this sari ribbon or the sari fabric on top, just using a bunch of different stitches. So straight stitch and zigzag stitch. And then I added a little chipboard heart, which has been covered in ferro texture paste and then colored with precious metal color. Uh, paint on top so that adds some really nice texture and I quite like how the overhang of those threads happen I didn't cut them off uh, to like so they're to the edge of the page I actually quite like how they overhang in the journal it just gives it a little bit of extra texture and also gives you something to flip the page over with so this next one here these pages here uh, this one here is the foliage prompt 
and I used the Vine border stamp from Darkroom Door with Distress Oxide inks. So, and I just really love how the colors have blended in together here. It kind of looks like sunlight is showing through the vines, which is a really nice little effect. And then just a quote from the Etched Flowers stamp set from Darkroom Door. So this one here, this is paint and I used paint in kind of like a watercolor way. I watered it down a lot to create this background. Then I used paint to color up this texture paste and put more texture paste on there and then stamped up the spread your wings butterfly and then also added some more shimmer. See that shimmer there? That's just some stickles where I just squeezed it on and let it dry and it just adds a nice little shimmer to my butterfly. So the next one here, this is building. This is the prompt for building. So I used the canal photo stamp that I designed for Darkroom Door and then just colored it in with some Marvula plume pens. And just for the background here, nice and simple, just added some uh, map. This uh, quote was already stamped on the map that I had in my stash. So added that in, just created a background here using the Starry Night stencil and then added my little uh, colored in image onto the top. So this one here, this prompt here was ink. So I used ink in a few different ways. For this one, I used it for um, stamping up the background with the stencil. So this one's a quite a good one to go and watch the reel for on the process of how I inked up the stencil and used it as a stamp and then used ink through the stencil and, uh, and then used it to color up my image here as well and just added a bit of collage bits and pieces around there. This prompt here, this one was metal. So I used imagery that was quite metallic, like these little cogs here and stamped imagery here and used a real kind of like a thick embossing powder for this one just to give it that extra texture. You can see there how it's quite raised as well, just to give it that metallic effect on the journal page. And then this stamp here is Steampunk Squares from Darkroom Door and just coloring that up and then adding a few words to that one. And this one here, this one's splatter. So I really wanted to go to town on my splatters on this page here. And so I used the Dina Wakely stencils. There's two st different stencils on there with some gloss sprays. I stamped up these iris stamps. This is from the Garden Greetings stamp set from Darkroom Door. Stamped it up on some watercolor paper, added some stitches, um, and then splattered a whole stack of the gloss spray over the top. So we've got uh, number 17. This is uh, prompt number 17 now. And I'm halfway through the journal at this point. So I wanted to do a double page spread. So if you just, you know, opened up the journal halfway, you've got a nice little double page spread there. And this quote, uh, sorry, this prompt is quote. So I wanted to hand letter a quote for this one. I used the Darkroom Door journal line stencil to create these lines. So they're like, um, variegated lines here and then I hand lettered my quote inside of that. I just used a nice little simple painted background and then one of my photographs which is one of the uh, Darkroom Door Viva La Flora postcards. So that's a really nice um, kind of like a subtle page really in terms of just using black and white on top of a colored background. Next up this one the prompt for this side here on the left is fold. So I just wanted to add like a little card inside of that. So this is just your normal six by four card. So I just used it with the Frangipani photo stamp and then added in a Dreams die cut on top and then just stuck it in there and then added another Dreams quote stamp and some little leaves, stamped leaves here just for a nice little um, journal page, like a folded part. Now this could be used for hidden journaling. So if you wanted to actually add some journaling in there, you could. So it's a nice little way to make an interactive page. And this prompt here, this was abstract. So I had a, a lot of fun um, creating this page here using just different paints and different stamps. I was using the grunge mark stamps from Darkroom Door, just doing some hand lettering, uh, scribbling inside the paint, just using a few different techniques for that page. So this one here on the left, this is paste. So I used texture paste through the ferns stencil from Darkroom Door and you can see all of that texture that it creates. It's like a, it's a really fun way to use stencils just to add some texture to your art journal pages. On this side here, 
This is the watercolor prompt. So I just wanted to do a nice little simple page for this one here. And I, so I just drew some squares or watercolor squares and then just doodled inside of it. Uh, this one here, this is person. This was the uh, prompt for person. So I used the Elegant Ladies collage sheets and created a nice little background here and then just added some butterfly stamps from the Spread Your Wings stamp set and a quote chip from Darkroom Door. And this one here, the prompt for this one was shape. So I wanted to use one of the new shape arch stencils. This is the Gothic arch stencil from Darkroom Door. So rather than just using the shape on the page, I've used it to create a little window. So you can see here, it's a little window when you go that way you can see through onto the left and this way you can see through to the typewriter. And I just colored it up using some Distress Oxide sprays. And then to make it look like it's a proper stone wall window, I used the brick wall stencil from Darkroom Door and added some crypt paste through it. This is, I've still got the crypt paste on my table here. So that is the new Distress Grit Paste Crypt. So it's like a real stony color. And I use that through the stencil there to create that stone brick wall effect. So it just gives that nice look both sides. Uh, so this one here, the prompt for this one was type. So I went to town on this one with all the types. So I used the alphabet jumble stencil. And again, because I still had that crypt paste on my table, I then used it through the stencil. So you can see there how that's got some really nice texture to it here. And then I also used the typewriter collage stamp from Darkroom Door. So that was a my image that I stamped and then just colored it in with some distress inks. And then I also wanted to use some typed books. So this was the torn text background stamp. And then I added the pen nibs and other stamps as well to finish off that page. This page here, this is another double page spread. And this one was super easy. Uh, to create because all I was using was tissue. So this was all pre-designed tissue. This is a Tim Holtz tissue, this bird one. Um, so that's a Tim Holtz collage tissue. And then this one here, it's like a decoupage tissue. So I just adhered both of them down using some gel medium and then added these little quote chips as well just to give it a nice little uh, quotes there for the page. So that was a nice little easy one to create and it just you know it just looks really nice within the journal so these two prompts here this one is botanical whoops so i used the full bloom stamp set and embossed it in white and then went over the top using some distress inks and that created a resist for that page and then stamped a quote and then stitched it before adding it to my page. And so the, the background here, I used the same colors here as I used here, the oranges and the greens, just to have that continuity. And then added some little foliage die cuts underneath. Now I haven't adhered them completely, so you can actually lift them up as well. So this page here, this one was the resist prompt so what i did for this one like this one here is also a resist as well using that embossing with distress ink over the top that creates a resist but this is a different type of resist this is using dina wakely gloss sprays so i used the tall flowers stencil from darkroom door and laid it over the page and then sprayed the first gloss spray which was these red and orange colors allowed that to dry and then that will then resist the next color that you put through which was the greens and the blues so that creates a resist even though it looks multicolored and it doesn't quite look like a resist but it was a resist technique so that's a really you know fun way to use the gloss sprays if you've never used them like that so that's a, a fun way to use those added another one of these quote chips which uh, which i really like obviously because i've used it on a few pages throughout the book uh, and then this one here this page is the travel prompt and I wanted to create another double page spread for this one and I used some oxide sprays for the background the vintage photo and speckled egg I love that color combination and then I've added the journal quote inside the emulsion frame stamp and then the Paris film strip and then some of the stamps from the Paris stamp set so this is from the Montmartre uh, stamp set and then this one is from the Tour Eiffel stamp set 
So, and I've just colored those up with distress inks. So I really like how that page turned out. And this one here, now this page, this is also another double page, but it's kind of flipped because the next prompt was drip. And what I did was I started using the gloss sprays on this side and I was dripping them down the page and I wanted to keep these drips. So this was my intention to actually create drips to do a, a quote in. But because I sprayed so much of this side, the, the drips, I mean, obviously I wanted them to go all the way over, but I kind of didn't leave myself enough room on this side to do a quote. So I thought, okay, let's do the quote on this side and I'll add some book things on this side because book was the next prompt. So I kind of made it an all in one. So it's got drips plus it has the books. So it's got two prompts in one for this page here. So I love using the drips here for my little journal lines and then adding some hand lettering in there. And then I've used the library books uh, stamp set from Darkroom Door to add the little library card and then a stack of books. And I colored all those in with distress inks as well. And then my last prompt here is vintage. So I wanted to use the vintage camera, vintage photos here. So this is like a little photo booth um, page here where I've used you know different photography stamps around here from the box brownies and the photography stamp set and then also this is the the photography or photography collage stamp and then some photo booth images as well so this page here I've intentionally left that spare because I will now go ahead and I will stick down the prompts so when I go and look at this journal later on I, it will have all the prompts there and you can then see what I did for each of the prompts. So I hope this has given you some ideas on how you can create according to the different prompts and what you can do and the one thing that I really love about Artful August is making the time each day to be creative and I set aside probably about half an hour each day to create my pages and obviously sometimes I didn't really have half an hour but I made myself do it and it made me become quicker in creating so I didn't want to overthink every single page I just wanted to grab the first idea that came to me and then run with that idea and then see where it could go like obviously like even with these resist there were so many different ways you could do resist I just thought of gloss sprays through the stencil let's do it so I didn't try to overthink every single day I just wanted to grab whatever idea uh, came to me first up and then run with that and then create so that's what I really love about Artful August it makes you create quickly and also at the end of the month you end up with a nice little completed journal like this that you can sit on your shelf and refer back to at any time throughout the year so if I'm ever looking for some ideas to like springboard some ideas for other journal pages in the future I can just use this journal and just have a look at it and go oh yeah great embossing powder all right let's bring that out and create a border it can also inspire me just to remind me to do watercolor stamping um, to also color in with Marvilla plume pens uh, stamp with oxide inks use texture paste use stickles inside butterflies so once you actually see everything that you do for the month it's a nice little idea like even like a technique book where you can refer back to as well so if you'd like to see this list and save this image to create your own journal like this or use it for prompts for your own projects then head over to my instagram at rachel Gregg, and you can also check out the hashtag to see what everybody else has been creating so i hope this has inspired you and thanks so much for watching